Bye. Hello there, it's uh, Steve in the kitchen. Um, I've had my orders. I'm about to make some cheese sauce for our cauliflower cheese. Pam's already, uh, I was making par cooked the cauliflower. I've just got me pan warming up a little bit. While we're doing that, let's talk about what we've got. I've just been told we have one, one and one. So that's either one ounce, one gallon, one cup, you decide. It's an ounce, equal amounts of butter and flour. So it's an ounce of each and then there's a pint of milk and you may not need the whole pint. I have warmed the milk, putting some peppercorns and bay leaves in it just to infuse some more flavour. Right, back to you. Don't worry about the bay leaf. Right, as you can see, my pan's warmed up, beginning to melt the butter, so I shall let that uh, melt down a little bit more. I have an array of utensils. Throw it out of the way for a minute. Right, as you can see, the butter has melted, so I'm going to put in the flour, turn it down slightly, I tend to wave it out, so I better use it all. I use a whisk. Now this is for us top chefs known as a room. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix this in with the butter. As you see it's coming together and you're going to say oh my god it's looked really lumpy and uh, yeah it is. But I'm going to keep warming this through well basically we're cooking out the flour so I'll keep doing this until we've had a little bit get a little bit of colour on the flour and the butter mix just to make sure that the flour is cooked through so you don't want to taste the flour so come back when uh, that's ready okay we've cooked off the flour and butter mix so now I'm just going to Gradually spill the milk everywhere and continue to stir. It's looking lumpy. Yeah, don't worry about it. No, but if you're well, making it for the first time, you might. Yeah, well, don't panic because obviously we add the milk. So I'll have it on, I'll turn it down a little bit. I mean, normally I would have it quite high because it helps, in my opinion, helps to help thicken it up. But you can see it's thickening up. There are lumps, but the more you whisk. Right, let's put all the milk in. Ignore the bit that I spilled. This is real cooking. We have a two foot by two foot kitchen. There's two of us in here. I'm Pen's, pra in. Pen's practically in the pan. Well, there went no room behind me because of my big fat bottom. I'm not expecting no reply, Steve. You're fine. Right, so you're just going to keep. I was whisking. just checking whether we had rump, but I think it's uh, oh, just the most enjoyed. Right, are you going to keep stirring this, and we'll come back when it thickens? <coughs> I'm going to keep stirring this, and you do what you got to do. Back now. Okay, as you can see, I've been standing here constantly whisking. You have to, otherwise it's likely to burn on the bottom. Um, I think one of the things is don't expect it to thicken immediately. Don't panic, isn't it, that it's not thickening. Not something I'm done for, is it panicking? No, but anybody who hasn't made one before might. It's not thickening, it's not thickening. Well, hopefully after seeing how easy it is. If I can do it, anybody can do it. 
And I generally am the one that makes it, so. Except when it's a macaroni cheese and he's not eating it. Yeah, do what you like with it then. Right. Seasoning, pinch of salt, pinch of pepper. Now you might want to use white pepper because you don't want to see the black flecks. I don't mind the black flecks because it means I know I've seen I've done it. Right, as you can see, look, that's thickening up really nice now, and that's not even got any cheese in it. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Can you lift your um, whisk up so we can see the viscosity? There you go. A bit like mm, slightly thickened double cream. Right. Need to get some more, I think. You don't have to do this. This is. Just, just say my touch. It's right. not really. But... It does bring out the flavour of the cheese. What was that? I know what it was. Other varieties of English mustard are available. <coughs> but not as cheap. Right. That's every Look, bit as good. As you can see, that is really quite thick now. When we're it, adding the mustard has actually changed. You can't see it on camera, but it has changed the colour of the sauce as well. Right, let's start. We've got some, I'm going to grate your cheddar. Yep. Put it in a bit at a time. Whisk, to be honest, you can literally take it off the heat now because obviously all you're doing now is melting the cheese and there should be enough heat in the sauce to do that. And you can see that lot's got... Now, I'm not going to put all this cheese in because Penn likes to put some on the top. Once this is done, I move out of the way and uh, the builder moves in. The one who has to do all the fixes. Yeah, and washing up. It's done apart from this. Right, there you go. Look at that. Beautiful. Even if I say so myself. Right, do you want to put it on the uh, cauliflower? Uh, you got enough cheese there? Now. Right, put right, myself a spoon. Get as close as you can. Now I like lots of sauce, being the man I am, quite yeah. saucy. I like to get in all the cracks. I'm getting a funny look now, I'm keeping this clue. We've had complaints. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had complaints and I would ignore them anyway. I am what I am. And we don't swear. Not on here. No, I don't swear. Well, I do, but not on here. Although, Chris the Butcher gets a lot more uh, subscribers than we do, and to EF and Jeff's like a madman, so maybe I need oh. to start. No, don't, please. But he does swear like a trooper. Check out Chris the Butcher's channel if you're on here. He's very good. He's funny. Please stay away from Kay's cooking. We're a better class of channel, and you can eat our food. Well, I'd hope you'd want to eat our food. Right, as you can see, look, there's a little bit left over. You can stick that in the jug, put it in the freeze in the fridge. It can be frozen. I, I, in fact, what I, I, I've never done this, but we might give it a go. Is put a bit more cheese in, and do some uh, like a rare, uh, um, a Welsh rare, a Welsh bit. rare bit. Looks like that supper's sorted, doesn't it? Um, that's just an idea that's come to me head. But as you can see, there's plenty of sauce on there. Not going not gonna to tap it down. It'll find its own level. And uh, there you go. Can you imagine with a bit of cheese on it? And uh, later on, we are going to cook our roast beef 22nd century style. So please come back and see what we're doing with that. I'm just about to finish the toppings for the broccoli, broccoli, no it's not, is it? Cauliflower cheese that was made earlier. I've topped with a little more grated cheese, as you can see. And in this pan, I've got some butter. And once that's melted, I'm going to add in some of the breadcrumbs that you saw me make earlier this week, I hope. Then the butter has melted, and in goes these 
breadcrumbs. These are homemade breadcrumbs just made from old bread which I blitzed in the food processor, the mini one, and then I dried out. I dried them on dehydrate in the um, Ninja, but you before this I used to just dry out on a tray in the oven so it's really easy and all you want to do is you want to get all these breadcrumbs to soak up the butter and it takes seconds look because as you can see there's no butter left in that pan so switch that off bring this over and all I'm going to do is just sprinkle over these buttered breadcrumbs yeah I suppose you know you could do it just with the breadcrumbs themselves but when we're adding butter we are adding some more flavor so let's you know always think about building layers of flavor right and that is all there is to it this will go into a hot oven for about 20 minutes and we shall serve this with our roast beef so I just want to say thank you for watching this edition of in the kitchen with Penn and of course Steve who's gone that way somewhere and we'll see you again very soon bye bye